All right, Emmanuel and Kimfei, you set this whole tour up. I mean, this went one week was juvenile detention centers, troubled teen programs, drug rehab centers, prisons, all I mean, very all various aspects where you know we see people that are in crisis at various points in their life. What kind of reaction did you get from these various institutions when you said, "Listen, we have this idea, you know, Optimum, we want to do this program." You know, what kind of reaction did you get from people? A lot of them were really excited about us coming in. A lot of the people in the re-entry portions of some of these facilities were really excited about getting us to come in. We did have a few of them push back, but one of the things that Ryan and I learned is that if you push them, they'll push for their people. And sometimes people get so caught up in doing what's normal. When they hear financial literacy, they're like, these people don't have any money. And you have to sell the dream to them and say, listen, financial literacy is a big component of them re-entering back into society. So all in all, some people were a little pushed back, but we got them on board. All right. Now, um, Darnell Canada, your group is called Rebuild. Rebuild. Real economics for building unity in innovative local development. All right. And you work with people who have are facing all sorts of different, you know, difficult life challenges, like coming home from prison, like having, ho- you know, being homeless. What kinds of things have you seen happen, and, and what do you, how do you help people? We help people by making people believe in themselves. We feel strongly that it's not about begging somebody else to do something for you. It's about you standing up and doing what you can for yourself. So we emphasize that to everybody that comes to our door. And we make sure that that's what they do. We train people in what we call construction safety and green training. So we've been above the loop for a long time. For years, we've been in front of when they said OSHA 10 is mandatory. All our guys already had it. When they said OSHA 4, all us had it. They just said lead in a couple months was going to be mandatory. All our guys already have it. So they're in front these, of And the these loop. are all training programs. All for those of us that programs. are not up on construction, these are, <laughs> these are, which is, these are all, these are all like, like certifications that you have to have. Okay, city, state, and federal certification. All right, but le- I want to stop you right there because I know if we were able to take phone calls when we've done shows on recidivism and, and helping ex-offenders in the past, the call that comes in over and over again is, what do you say to somebody? You fill out that job application. Have you ever been convicted of a felony? If you lie, you can get you can get fired or canned later on down the road. If you say yes, mm-hmm. you know if it's a choice between two applications, they're going to take the one with the person that doesn't have the felony, especially if it's for some serious, you know, if it's for, for some serious offense. How do you get past that? How do you help people? How do help guys get past that let's say a guy is coming home he did his bed he's home now he really wants to make things right but you know what how's how's he going to get past that and get a real job one of the things that I love about construction is a it's a forgiving industry. They really don't worry about people who have felonies, so who are been formerly incarcerated. And we have been able to build relationships with developers and contractors. One of one of the uh, contractors that definitely supported Four City Ratner in downtown the Nets Arena. They support us wholeheartedly. There's other contractors. Uh, uh, Myrtle Avenue builders, they're building uh, skyscrapers. We have about 30 of our guys working with them. These developers look forward to seeing guys get off the street and get into work. And we have four vans running running around the streets every day with guys full of them looking for jobs. And it's about, it's about being responsible, getting up in the morning and participate. And we tell guys, if you have to fill out an application, fill it out correctly. If you have to say, yeah, tell them I speak about it. And then when you go in and speak to the guy. Don't speak about the crime as much as you're going to speak about what you did to make sure that it never happens again. Yeah, so how do you handle that during the job interview when the guy the guy's looking at your application and he says, oh, I see you've been convicted of a felony. What was it? And then you're, you know, whatever it was, assault, manslaughter, uh, what we do with drug first, possession. First thing we do, we sit guys down in a course that teaches them exactly how to handle that. We make sure that they're prepared for that. We have a, a, a course where we teach resume writing and we teach it a little bit different than most people. We have a course where we teach people how to go through an interview. We teach it different than most people because we realize that these are guys that come out of prison. Some of them feel if you speak to them too loud, it's a problem. So we teach them how to humble themselves because in the construction industry, 
guy come on you, he'll scream on you, he'll use language that's not proper. But in some of these guys, if I wouldn't go through the program with them, they might come out a little rough and lose their job. So we teach them how to keep their job by understanding that this is a language of the industry and it's not about anybody taking anything away from you. Now that's an important point too because there's a, there's a certain way you have to act to survive on the streets. Right. And there's a different way you have to act when you're in a corporate environment or when you're just in a regular job type of environment. Right. And how do you how do you convince somebody, you know, a guy a guy that's, you know, how now do you say that like them. it was like uh this week one of our classes had to go through that and it wasn't put in the main curriculum so that means they had to go through it for an extra day and they was complaining about I don't want to go through it I don't want to go through it and I said okay I'm going to go in there and I'm going to talk to him when I went in and spoke to him I talked to him real harsh real loud real uh, at him and then I said and you're going to go through the class and then I left out I went down to my office and said I'll go back after lunch because I'm going to have to calm him down I on purpose sent them through something <laughs> and when I went back to him, and they, I said, now, I just came up here and talked to you. I know there was some problems. The teacher called me, and he told me there was some problems. And I said, hey, y'all say y'all didn't want to go through the extra class, but but I came over here and talked to y'all a certain way, and y'all had problems with me that y'all know. Now, if y'all go on a job and they talk to you in a certain play, way, you're definitely going to have problems with them. So I sent you through it already to show you, and now you're going to be here Monday for that class. Mm-hmm. And that's a... <laughs> So it's like learning by example, and everyone just feel free feel yeah. free to uh, jump in. Ryan, what about in terms of self esteem? What where does you know what role does that play? I mean, we it? always talk about the importance of faith. I mean, we uh, with Optimum, we always go into the seven steps of financial plan of, of freedom, but we also talk about the importance of things that before we even talk about the budget and the FICO score and, and and things of that nature, you have to get into the elements of faith, which actually goes into every component of your life. Do you really? And faith has two components. One is believing that you're going to be successful, and the other is acting on your belief. So if people act according to what they believe is going to happen, if you think you're going to be broke for the rest of your life, you think you're going to be a, a no good, formerly incarcerated, unemployed person for the rest of your life that's never going to amount to anything, guess what? That's exactly where you're going to end up. But if you do believe that, yes, I might have made some mistakes, but tomorrow's going to be a better, brighter day. I can make opportunity for myself. I can do those things that are necessary to move myself forward and have faith, believing in it and acting on it. It will start coming to fruition. And sometimes, you know, if you show examples of faith, you know, showing examples of what we've had to go through in order to make optimum capital management a success, making sure that you show them of what, it, like what Darnell, I've been working with Darnell for what, almost five years now, you know, and so we've got some things that we've done uh, around showing true examples of when you have a true element of faith and believing in it, showing that one guy that we talked to who was a former gang member, when he sat down, all he had was $600, we taught him how to flip it and turn it to a new construction company, which they turned instead of $600 and turning it into 12 Twelve hundred dollars on the corner, and now you got to look over the back on your shoulder. You're taking it six hundred, turning into a company, creating something for yourself, and now you got contractors calling you with ten thousand dollar contracts, and it's all legal. It's all above the board. These are true examples of what individuals can do, regardless if you got to check that box on there, whether it's a felony or not. You can do something for yourself. And again, we try to show folks that, and we, we come at them we, real, we come at them hard, and we won't. It's almost like that tough love initiative to show that you. It's, it's selfish of you to now try to achieve your purpose in life. So we want to make sure you're achieving that. What about, what? what was there anything that surprised you about the tour? Because you've been out in the community many times before. Was there anything, you know, and Manuel, feel, feel free to jump in too. Was there anything about the about the tour that, you know, you were like, wow, it's changing a little bit? Or was it an attitude change? Anything changing? Yeah, well, what different? we're, you know, and Manuel can talk about this as well, because what we're doing is we're writing a journal. And every time we come back uh, from a, a, a stop, we write down our thoughts and views and just little going through that journal and kind of teach is about what we're seeing and you know one one of our things that I noticed and I'm, I'm sure Mignola has something totally different because we're taking something different from it was that it was it was it was a lot more hope than you would have thought originally in those individuals in the prison especially those individuals who had had done longer stints of time this seemed like they are ready they're ready to come out and they're ready to do something positive and uh, one thing that really kind of surprised me was a little bit uh, on the negative aspect was that a lot of those individuals who are caring for those especially from the state facilities didn't seem like they had their best interest at heart all the time. It seemed like they were very disgruntled.
McDonald. It seemed like a lot of individuals were almost upset at us for trying to come in there and try to give them assistance. A lot of, uh, again, what Mignon said, pushback. And it just didn't seem as if there were, it was a very welcoming uh, uh, position outside of Otisville, which is a federal prison. Now, I have to say Otisville was one of the best, most well-received uh, individuals. Those folks, they treated us well. And we definitely have to go back. and, we, and It makes us easier to do our work.